Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about efficiency in particle systems. So before we discuss efficiency, we need to discuss the concept of energy transfer. Uh, so energy can't be created or destroyed, that's the first law of thermodynamics, but many engineering devices convert energy from one form to another. Uh, anything that does this is an, ener is an energy transfer device. Uh, so some things like solar panels, we're converting radiant energy into electrical energy. Uh, some things like our internal combustion engine actually have more than one process, so we're converting chemical energy uh, through combustion into heat. And then once we have heat, we are converting that into mechanical energy. Uh, and then finally, the one we're going to be dealing with most commonly in dynamics uh, is just the sheer mechanical to mechanical. So this transmission here doesn't actually convert the type of energy. Uh, it is going to start with mechanical rotational energy. It's going to end with mechanical rotational energy. But in the middle here, it is converting it from one uh, set of torque and velocity to a different torque and velocity. Same power, uh, but it is a higher speed, lower torque at the input, a lower speed, higher torque at the output here. All right. Now with efficiency. So the efficiency of device is the percentage of useful energy, work, or power that makes it from the input of a system to the output. Uh, so it can be measured by taking the output energy, work, or power, uh, and dividing that by the corresponding energy, work, or power at the input side of things. Um, so these are the equations. So energy out over energy in, work out over work in, power out over power in. Any one of those three is going to be the efficiency. And this is the Greek letter eta. That's what we're going to use for uh, our symbol for efficiency. So by rearranging those previous equations, we can use the input along with the known efficiency to predict the output of a system. Uh, so something like the efficiency times the power in would give you the expected power out in a system. Uh, and in mechanical systems, kinematics will usually constrain the motion, meaning that the losses will play out as a loss of force uh, or loss of torque rather than a loss of distance or velocity. Uh, so for our transmission, uh, the speed is going to be locked in because of kinematics. So we're going to have, if we have the input speed, we know the output speed regardless of efficiency. Uh, it's the torque that we would lose in our system. So in a translational system, the efficiency times force in times velocity in is equal to force out times velocity out. Uh, something like a hydraulic system would be translational. Uh, the velocity in and velocity out are always going to have a set mechanical uh, correspondence. It's going to be determined via kinematics, uh, but the force might be lower than expected with 100, unless the efficiency over here is 100%. All right, so problems within efficiency. So obviously we want to have a system where the efficiency is high, as high as possible. So transmission, we want to lose no energy, but invariably we lose some energy. So since energy cannot be destroyed, the lost energy doesn't really go away. It's just converted to a non-useful form. Uh, generally, that's going to be heat. Um, so when we have lots of heat, we get the uh, smoke. So for electronics, we, if they smoke, or something like transmission, if we get smoke, uh, chances are that's the, a sign of inefficiency. Uh, something has gone wrong. Uh, and these problems can, uh, this built-up heat can further decrease efficiency. So it can cause lots of problems. Um, but it can further exacerbate the situation, something like a transmission. If there is too much heat built up, it can actually burn off the lubricant, making the system even less efficient and a kind of a cascading failure to uh, other things. Something like the power lines as well. So if you have a high voltage power line, um, the more resistance you have, the less efficient, but the higher the temperature of most substances, the more resistance you have. So actually, if it's really hot and you're running a lot of voltage through something, those power lines can become less and less efficient. Uh, eventually, they get so hot that they're going to either sag to the ground uh, or touch one another or otherwise go out. Um, so uh, with that, that's all I have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.